In this part 2 of Approaching Gangs Racism, I want to show you that the world itself is run as a gangster cult. Now, for example, let's take a multinational corporation of today. I don't have to mention names or many multinational corporations. Let's go to a local um, office of one of those multinational corporations where it's Pepsi or it is Microsoft, whatever. What do you see? You see the local CEO, or maybe it's a top manager or whatever you call it, but let's call the local CEO. He wears a suit. When he enters a place, everyone that can uh, kind of back off or show some, give him some space as a type of honor, because he's the CEO. Then you have the managers who are close to him. They also wear suits. And next to the managers, you have the assistants of the managers, and then you have the rest of the employees, and they all emulate that big guy, the CEO, and the managers keep the rest in check so they all comply with the CEO. And when one of the employees, doesn't matter how good he is in his job, doesn't show proper respect or validation to CEO, those managers will put them in his, in his place. So it's a male structure where you have a guy at the top who is the big guy and the rest either is close to him and they get benefits or they're far off and they need to look behind their backs. Is that not the same as with gangs? Is that not the same what gangsters are doing? They are, they are the big guys, so-called, and they're competing with other big guys, and then they have adherents who support them, or very close to them, and then you have the rest of the members, or the people within their territory, and everyone in the territory is expected to give homage to that big guy. Whoever doesn't do it, they're beat up or they're killed. Now, in the corporate world, it doesn't happen that quickly that you're killed if you as an employee or an investor don't give homage to the big guy. Why? Because the corporations have customers and they need to keep the customers happy. Even if the corporation doesn't depend on the spending of the customers, their existence is legitimized because they have a base which are the customers or the people that adhere to their products or to their service. So they need to give a good impression to the customers. Regular, uh, regular gangs in the street, let me say street gangs don't have that. That's why with them the violence escalates very quickly. But with, cor with, with corporations, or let's say in the corporate world, there is this code of honor in which the violence is acted out in a legislative manner. Someone is fired, someone is put on a blacklist, or someone is sued, or a company splits, and now there is um, this, the, let's say there's conflict and in, in competition. So the violence in the corporate world is regulated because they have the common people to police. Because yet they have many common people that identify themselves with their product or their service. But it's the same structure in the corporate world as with those street gangs. It's energetic sodomy. Why? Because those that rule the world, they worship the beast, Apollo. And Apollo rules on behalf of Satan, his father. So that means that those that rule the world, they are sodomized because Satan is the first and primary sodomite in the universe, or that means that um, in existence. And Apollo who is the ruler of the darkness, on behalf of his father, is also a sodomite. So they are sodomites. So this gangster, um, I'm sorry, this gangsterism is a reflection of the paranormal. Because demons are sodomites. You have some unclean spirits who are female because of the Nephilim, Ne amongst Nephilim spirits, you have female Nephilim spirits, but apart from them, the demonic realm exists only out of male entities, and they're all sodomites. 
they all hate females. They are against male and female. So in gangsterism, that is reflected because gangsterism is paranormal. It's not natural. No man in his right mind or no man that operates based on his natural biology would tolerate another man force themselves on them mentally and so and to be to feel good about themselves no man that operates according to its natural biology or its natural spirituality would allow that they would come upset they would fight against it now in the streets you have the common people of the uh, of the ghetto and you have the gang and from in the gang you in the gang recruit so you have young men that join it to and those young men they get some benefits in return which aren't worth it in the long run but they get some benefits that's how it goes in the streets with the world in general the world's population through society is conditioned to accept and even embrace and support the gangsterism of those that rule the world the wizards are the big men as you can call them then you have the black nobility and the blue blood households they are the managers and then you have the population and amongst population you have sellouts in the corporate world and in religion and also in the military that police their fellow common human beings and they get some crumbs from the wizards. They never meet the wizards. They don't even know who the wizards are, but the wizards have their handlers. And those handlers hand them out crumbs in a form of a high salary or some fame or fortune in exchange for their uh, spiritual well-being, of course. Because Satan, who is the, gang, the gangsta, if you want to call it that way, he does nothing for free. He's a, he's a sodomite, remember? So he always wants to feed off of you. But that's how the world is. The world is a gangster cult. That's what the world is. But this, because people look down on street gangs, because with street gangs, the violence escalates quickly and the dead bodies are seen directly, people tend to look at that and say, oh, that's horrible. And this is a distraction the media is using to hinder them from seeing that they're living in a gangster system themselves. So it's cognitive dissonance. It's also denial. Black magic intends to cover people's perception so they won't see that they are in a gangster system. And in the in Every, in off, on every continent, there's a different type of black magic. It's kind of weird. Now that I'm recording this video, right now a helicopter flies over this hostel. But okay, the enemy sends distractions and continue. So, in Asia, I'm saying in East Asia, the black magic has a blinding effect. In um, South Asia and Southeast Asia, it has more of a, I would say, a gas lighting effect. I made a video about it. In Europe and North America or in the Western world, it has a denial effect. It will mean more like a distraction effect. So, in all parts of the world, you have black magic, and there are some differences, but it all comes down to the following to prevent people from really to prevent it from getting through the people in what type of structure they're operating. And that's how capitalism remains in existence. Because in capitalism, the people are triggered in a fearful way to think of their fellow human beings as competitors and robbers. And they are, they are, they are told you need to work hard because it's your money, it's your property, 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 property. Property is a myth. Let me say it like that. You were born out of your mother, you owned nothing on the earth, and you will leave this body when this body expires. You didn't create any of the matter of the earth. So you're born on the earth, 
they didn't create it and shall depart from the earth that you didn't create it and it's the most high himself who created the earth will resurrect you when he returns so you never never you never owned anything you only possess things to possess something means you hold something close to you that means you have a grip on something human beings have possessions we don't have actual natural ownership that's not even possible so property is a myth that you naturally have the right to own something even though you can't do it naturally even your own body will expire but in capitalism they condition you to believe in this thing called property and then through traumatic conditioning they uh, force you to agree with this thing called property even though it doesn't exist in reality and you're told that you need to be careful because others may take your property so you're kept in this loop of fear and because you're in the loop of fear you're always on the run wanting to escape that others may take advantage of you because you don't have enough property so because you're distracted from avoiding um, conflict or exploitation by others you don't see that you are exploited yourself that's capitalism so capitalism is a open gangster system it's it's openly gangster but because people are so distracted they don't see it for even believers who defend capitalism and even can they even use Bible verses to defend capitalism if though capitalism is antichrist has nothing to do with Christ ask them what a free market is ask them what the market is ask them about the invisible hand has to lead the market can they explain all those things can they um, can they justify those things based on the words they can't are those things in line with Christ no so why are they defending it because they are in cognitive dissonance I mentioned in part one that the gangsterism comes through uh, generational trauma. The, the rulers of this world who worship this Greek god, their rule depends on the sword. That is military conflicts and crime. So they, and they conduct military conflict as well as crime. Now there are crime incidents when common human beings uh, misbehave or they commit acts against another human beings, such things exist, but most crime are rituals. And those rituals, both military conflict as crime, they traumatize the population over and over again. And in this, this it is in this trauma that they condition the masses to embrace their solutions. It's the same as with street gangs. Those street gangs, I mean the guys that lead them who are pagan they realize after a while hold on a minute why don't we use the influence we have in a constructive manner but then they remember that they are greedy and that if they have to comply now with justice it means they have to they will lose much of the grip they have on the locals they don't want to deal with the local authorities nor with society that keeps them um, in this disadvantage so instead they want to transfer this funders to the rest of the people so they're cowards and they themselves beat other people up so you have the so let's say you have five gangs in uh, a ghetto the five leaders of it they come together they have their satanic rituals in which you call upon evil spirits and there are they are warlocks so there are um fortune tellers there and then they make an agreement saying you here on the haitian gang you there, you, you, you lead the uh, Irish king. You know what we're going to do? We are going to, uh, we're going to make two Haitians beat down an Irish woman. And that Irish woman is not a real woman, it's a transgender, but uh, it's important for the population to think that some Haitian gang targeted Irish folks. And what happens then, the, people, the, Irish, popul the Irish migrants want to feel threatened. And then there's conflict, there's trauma. And then you will leave the Irish gang, you are coming with solutions for the Irish migrants against the Haitians. Then you are going to 
say to the Asian community, you see what's going on? Those white folks over there, they can't stand us. Allegedly, two um, talks from our community harms them. Now they want to come after us. You know what? We have solutions for you against folks. So that's how those gang leaders do it. Where did they learn this? They learned it from the wizards who rule the world. Because that's how the world is run. It's one big gangster cult. And I want this to get through to you. So, for you to expect justice from this world, if you are a little child or you're a teenager that has been brainwashed and your good intentions and your good human qualities have been used against you, okay, that's different. You just need to be delivered. But if you are past your teenage years, you're, you're past your early 20s, and you still believe in justice on the world's terms, then you seriously need to check yourself. Because it's obvious that this world is based on violence. It's based on energetic sodomy. Or better, just on sodomy. It's run by sodomites who hate the Most High, they hate Christ, they hate the natural male and female design that the Most High designed, and they hate women, the absolute constant women. Those are the ones that rule the world. That's why domestic violence against females continues, because those that rule the world hate females. And in many places, the females are conditioned to accept the victimization as part of daily life. And then you have false empowerment that seems to liberate women, or seems to free women from it, but they put women in competition against men, which makes them more vulnerable to victimization. So that's the world. If you're past your early 20s and you still believe in the justice of this world, then you seriously need psychological help. You need, you need mental deliverance because something's not, not right with you. Straight up. So, this is part two. And the helicopter is coming again. Okay. I don't know how they do it, but anytime I'm making a video sharing knowledge, somewhere out of the blue there's some distraction coming. Either people that were at a distance suddenly come close and begin to talk loud and why they're raising their voice where I'm recording, or suddenly um, there's a helicopter flying near, or suddenly people, there are cars uh, passing by and they make a lot of sound. There's always some kind of distraction coming when I'm teaching you. But I, you witness this in this video. I'll keep teaching you guys. So, you want to prove gangsterism? Realize and acknowledge that you live in a gangster system. But the gangsters at the top, they wear suits, they drink expensive champagne, and they use maritime English or admiral English to use that um, high society witch language, which we perceive as formal, business, polite language. It's witch language. That's what they're using. I explained this in a document I, I handed out through email a while ago called about witch language. So the gangsters at the top, they wear suits, they speak polite, fluent witch language, and they uh, travel in business class, and because they have a front of kindness towards women, many people think, oh, those are gentlemen. <laughs> it's far from the truth. Gangsters in the streets are poor, and they turn on their own people to become rich. And because what they do is so desperate, and because the violence and the blood is, is seen immediately, people abhor it. But the gangsters at the top do the same thing, but because they use much symbology to give off, off a form of righteousness, which you don't, they don't have any righteousness, but they give off a form of righteousness, people fall for this form of righteousness. And that's why pagan Christianity is so popular, because in pagan Christianity, those wizards and warlocks, who are the gangsters of this world, they have a form of godliness, but there's no godliness at all. They resist the real godliness, they resist the real power of Christ. They only pretend to agree with Christ. They pretend to be on Christ's team. But exactly, they're exactly the opposite. With, they lead churches where they lie to you, exploit you, 
drain you but they say hallelujah and you keep going there so gangsters at the bottom are abhorred because they are poor impoverished and they can't secure their gangster lives are for long those at the top are the elite gangsters and the world's population bends over to them because they don't want to face reality instead they want to spit on the gangsters of the street but the gangsters that harm them their daily life by forcing them to work from nine to, to five they force them to pay tax of that they leave them alone i'm not promoting street gangsterism absolutely not but at least guys in the street that see that there's injustice they want to do something about it but what they end up doing is self-destructive to themselves they often think by becoming a gangster they can they can get some cash and later can do good for the community now there are times street gangsters do invest in their communities and they do good stuff they're human remember so they have empathy for the community somewhere now, they're not all uh, psychopathic narcissists but what they're involved in is is harmful to themselves so even if you do some good to the community it doesn't work out well for them okay but at least they see reality for what it is that's why many cops are not honored by them because they see clearly that many police services are the same like them the only thing is because they have the wealth and the societal approval behind them that's why many police officers get away with killing innocent people and the rest of society just tolerates it because they have the approval of society behind them how many black folks have been killed by police brutality in the united states how many teenagers have been harmed it also by black police officers because you also have black scholars that join showing that how often did that happen and the court refused to prosecute those officers and those officers are still around doing their job in the communities what is that it's because they have the backup of the community just like a street gang can have the backup of the neighborhood a street gang can have the backup of the hood in the same way cops and have the backup of the community i'm not saying that every cop is evil I never said that because there are people who really want to serve and protect and they do serve and protect but as I explained in a video before the whole construct of the police comes from Freemasonry and has been enforced by the wizards to police the human population to keep them trapped in this cycle of relief seeking so you can, you can have individual or groups of police, police officers that are of good quality that are contributing to the community but that's them they're the ones that are real they're the ones that are really protecting and serving but the system that they're in is designed to keep everyone trapped and that system is used as a substitute gang to keep the street gangs in check so the purpose of the police is not to get rid of street gangs it is really to be a substitute gang that's approved by society as a whole so that's it for now keep agreeing with Christ and okay one more thing if you are a cop or a law enforcer and you're watching this video this is not a video against you I'm not taking sides in any conflict and just pointing out the truth if you are there to protect and serve then protect and serve use that uh, police corps as a means to protect and serve the moment you realize that your superiors want to blood sacrifice you or other people, just refuse. You have a right to refuse that. And that oath you took, renounce it in Christ Jesus' mighty name, because that oath binds you to the paranormal. You are used as the street mercenaries against the street gangs to legitimize the gangsterism of the wizards. But you can overrule this by using your your influence for good so do that well that's it for now keep agreement with christ and be at peace